Hi, my name is Nancy Ham, and I am one of the admins of the NCS Mentor Me group. And I am also the owner and teacher at gentleventures.com. Uh, we have classes on newborn care specialist training, newborn nanny training, and the holistic version of both of those classes. Um, by the way, the holistic version is doing amazing. And I'm so glad that I, that I decided to put that on. But we also have continuing education classes. And this is one of the continuing education classes that I have listed on my site. And today we're going to do the first part, which is, um, am I cut out to be an NCS? And the other thing I want to mention is if you take one of my full courses, this is included with that. Because I want all of my students to know what to do once they finish the course. Lots of students are taking courses and then sitting back and saying, now what? So I want you to know what to do. We go through everything. We start from, like I said, are you cut out to be an NCS? All the way through creating your name, marketing, tar who's your target audience, um, what papers do I have to set up? How do I get my EIN number? Uh, how do I uh, decide what kind of entity I want to be? Do I want to be a sole proprietor? Do I want to be an LLC? Do I want to be a corporation? What do I want to be? And then we walk you through um, everything, everything, completely everything, until finally you're sitting behind your computer and you are working on your business. Um, so today we're just gonna start, we're gonna talk about, are you cut out to be an NCS? Because it does take a special person to be an NCS. Not everybody can do this. I will tell you that I had tried many businesses before I found my niche in being a newborn care specialist and starting the classes. And before when I started my businesses, I just wasn't successful at all. Why? Because I didn't have the passion, the fire in my gut to do it. And you gotta have that. That is one thing you've got to have if you want to make yourself successful. You can't be in it for the money. It's not gonna work. It may work for a little while, but eventually you're going to say, oh, babies, ugh. isn't there an easier way to make money? And yeah, there are a lot easier ways to make money. So the one thing that you really have to have is a passion, a passion for babies. Um, when I started this 28 years ago, it was because I loved newborns. I was like, I needed to figure out what I needed to do with my life. And I was like, what do you really enjoy doing? What I really enjoyed doing was taking care of my babies. And I thought, hmm, I think I'll try that. And so I started out as a newborn nanny and I would work for the first year and I worked up to, I think three years with one family. And then I'd go on to the next family because I don't care for, Three, uh, 18 months to three is my favorite age other than newborn. So once they hit three, I was like, I'm done with this. So then I would move on. And I did that once. The rest of my children were babies when I, when I left. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> That's what happens when you get older. You forget things really fast. Um, so you have to, we'll go back to have a passion. So you have to have that passion for what you're, what you're doing. And, um, oh, I know where I was going with it. I know. Okay. So after being in it for like 15 years, 20 years, almost 30 years, sometimes you sit back and you say to yourself, do I really like babies? And then with, with all of my jobs up until the last two years, because I am semi-retired, which means that I take a job when I feel like it. Uh, so before that, I was working back to back to back to back to back. But I would work a job and then schedule my next job two weeks after 
the job that I had just quit. So I always had a two week break. So generally I would, if I, if I worked um, four jobs a year, I, I would have a uh, eight week vacation every year, which was really nice. Um, but I scheduled two weeks in between. And in doing that, sometimes I would be like, do I really want to continue this? I said, that last baby was really difficult. And then I would be out someplace and I would hear a newborn cry. And right away I was like, where is he? Where is he? Does he need my help? And it would just strike me funny because I realized that passion was still in there. It's always in there. That's the kind of passion you need to have um, if you want to continue this. So um, the first thing that we're gonna talk about I'm sorry, I've got to look at my notes because duh, um, is, oh, oh, I want to tell you something first before we start, because there's a lot of people out there who say, is there enough work? Um, you know, we just can't find work. There is more than enough work. I know I have heard from NCSs around the country who say, we are just flooded with work. We need more NCSs. And that's within the last few weeks. Um, every... I got to get this straight here. Every 8.08 .08 seconds a baby is born. You don't think there's enough work out there? There's enough work. We, that is not the issue. That will, that will probably never be the issue. There's always babies being born. But the other thing is, there's always work for us who know what we're doing, who have educated ourselves, who have studied, who are good at our job, who have integrity with our job, who are reliable, who have good references. If you're not going to do any of that stuff, don't bother because you'll be sitting on the couch not doing any work. And it will only be because you're not putting your heart and soul into it. Um, so we're going to go on and we're going to talk a little bit about what I think, and this is like, I, this is my opinion, but what I think the qualifications are for uh, doing this job. One thing that you need is uh, patient, just a minute. Yeah, one thing that you need is patience. Something I'm not real good at sometimes, but I find myself, even though in my personal life, sometimes I have no patience, when I am with a mom and a, and a baby, I have so much patience. I don't know where it comes from. I have so much compassion and so much patience and so much love that it just kind of overwhelms me. You got to have that. You've got to have patience with uh, somebody who is been crying for eight hours. Let's say that you walk into a job and this baby uh, mom looks at, looks at you and says, this child has been crying all day here and almost throws the baby at you. And I will tell you that there, there have been times that I want to smack the mother because first of all, she's not listening to what I'm saying, what I'm telling her to do. Because I, and I know she's not because say within 10, maybe 15 minutes tops, usually it's within a couple of minutes of me getting the baby, the baby's quiet, sleeping and out. So I know she's not doing what I tell her to do. So then what do you do? You sit down and you say, okay, let's talk about what led to this all day crying. Can we, you know, can we ferret out what's going on? Can you walk me step by step on how we got to this point? Patience, you need to have patience. You need to have common sense. Oh my God. I go to lunch every other week with a group of friends. We've been doing it for like 10 years. Love it. And one of our main subjects is common sense. It comes up sometime during the conversation every time we meet. Because it would be like, we'll, we'll say something really ridiculous that somebody did and look at each other and say, common sense. Common sense is not something that is, mm, is learned. You can't teach it. You can't teach it. It's just, let me see if I've got a, a, an explanation for what it is exactly. It's sound and prudent judgment 
based on a simple perception of the situation or facts. So you see something going on and you say to yourself, does it make sense for me to do this? And what are the consequences if I do it? Consequences, girls, consequences. What are the consequences? If you look at that and think, well, here, here's one. Well, I think I'll go out drinking tonight and, and I'll walk home, but I'm gonna take the shortcut through that alley. Hello, where's your common sense? Do you get it? Do you, see, and, and you have to have common sense when you're taking care of babies. Common sense says that you do not change a baby in the baby's crib and get poop on the cheat. And then just say, oh, I'll swaddle the baby up and put, the, put him back down because the poop won't touch the baby. Mom comes in the next day and there's poop on the, on the sheet. She's going to go ballistic. Common sense would say you never, ever change a baby in the baby's bed. You always change a baby on the changing table. That's not being educated. That's having common sense. Okay, I can, I can go off on tangents like this all day, but we'll try to stick to the subject here. Uh, you have to have the ability to awake when the baby wakes. Some people you can't wake with five alarm clocks and somebody pounding them over the head. They don't wake up. You, if you're that kind of person, bye. You need to find another career. <clears throat> I can hear a baby across a house, <clears throat> excuse me. And I always sleep, sleep with one eye open. And I do rest, I do, I mean, there, I obviously sleep, I dream when I am at the job, but all that baby has to do is start wait, and I'm up and up. One time I was not, one time. And this was early on my career. This had been the second time I has, was with this family. So they knew me and they knew I was very dependable. But they had um, had me staying in the room across from the baby, across the hall from the baby, directly across the hall. And then they had company and they wanted company to have this, this bedroom because it was a really nice bedroom. So they moved me to the other side of the house. And I don't sleep with a monitor uh, because I can hear but I always put the monitor in the room just in case I do need it. Um, but this particular night, knock, 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 Nancy. I'm like, yeah, She's, uh, the baby's crying. And I'm like, oh my God, I was so humiliated. Oh my God. So uh, from then on, that never, it only happened that one time. From then on, I always heard that baby, but my ear was, only going in the direction of what was across the hall. And the baby was across the house. So that was my excuse, not a good excuse. I should have had a, a monitor on because I was so far away, but it never occurred to me because I always hear. So anyway, um, if you cannot go back to sleep when the baby wakes up and you feed him and then go put the baby back down and you can't go back to sleep, Honey, do awake duty. You get paid more and there's no reason that you should have to be awake all night if you're, if you're getting regular pay. There are a lot of people that want awake duty and not very many of us are willing to do it. It's really hard on your health. So if you're one of those people that can't go back to sleep, do awake duty. Be smart about it. Um, you need to have a car. Oh my goodness. I have no words for people that, that call me and say, well, I don't have a car. How am I gonna get there? Well, you can call Lyft or you can call Uber or you can take a bus, but those means of transportation are not reliable. And if you are going to be an NCS, you need to be reliable. 
one thing that I have that my clients have listed on so many of my reference letters is she is always on time. And I mean, I had this, I've had two, two of my uh, guy clients say to me, how do you do that? You knock on the door every day at exactly 9.58. How do you do that? It's just in my being. I am never late ever. I'm always on time. That's just me. But you have to be on time. This is your livelihood. They depend on you to be on time. If you're going to be more than five minutes late, you call them and say, I'm going to be late. So you have to be a timely person. Um, you have to be flexible. If you're one of these people that it's your way or the highway, it's the highway for you, hon. I'm telling you, that's where you're going. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to give a little bit. And always, sometimes it's going to be in uh, how you swaddle. Sometimes it's going to be in how you feed. Sometimes it's going to be in can you do an extra night? Sometimes it's going to be in can you work a little bit longer? Now, in the contract that I sell, and I do sell a contract, um, it states in there that they can add hours to your contract, but they may not take away hours. If they take away hours, they're still ha having to have to pay for that time that you did not work. So um, be flexible, not backwards flexible, just forward flexible. You have to be able to communicate with sensitivity and clarity. Okay, so do not say this. So sweetheart, I have told you how to swaddle now for five nights in a row. Do you think you're ever gonna get it? Don't say that. Don't, do not say that. What you wanna say is, I would love to show you how to swaddle. Not I would love to show you again how to swaddle. I would love to show you how to swaddle. Would you like to practice in front of me? And let me tell you something. If you feel you don't have it, tomorrow night we'll do it again. You've got to be clear. You've got to, got to be concise. And you've got to be sensitive when you're communicating. I'm a very direct person. I, a lot of people do not like me because I'm so direct. They want me to mince words and go around saying this and that and please and thank you. And, and I have no problem with that. But to, to make it pretty. And I generally just get right to the point. However, with postpartum moms, eh, I get a little bit pretty and I get a little bit mushy. And although I'm still to the point, I'm not as direct with them. And it's because they've got all these hormones coursing through their body and they are not good with that. So just be sensitive, be clear in how you communicate. Um, be able to follow instructions. Like I said before, it is not, it is not your way or the highway. It is, we're going to figure this out. Now, there's sometimes it can be your way or the highway. And here's a really good example of that. When this happened to me, and this has been, let's see, I've been doing this for 28 years. So this has probably been 20 years ago, at least. I went on a job. God, that's a long time ago. I went on a job and um, the father uh, took me into the living room when I got there and says, let's talk about what you're going to do. And I'm like, great, because I usually, I do that all the time, but I usually talk to the mother and the father, but the mother was like, leave me out of it. And I thought that's kind of strange. And so he sits down, he takes out this legal pad, uh, two pages, single spaced, both sides of instructions on how I was to take care of their baby. And I mean, it was everything from how to diaper, how to hold, how to feed, how to, 
uh, stand up, sit down, do this, do that. I mean, I was sitting in the couch across from him and I was like, <laughs> and he looks at me and he says, do you find this funny? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I do. I'm the one with experience here. That's why you hired me. You're the one who's never had a baby before or even held a baby before. And you have all these instructions on how I am to take care of the baby. And he said, well, this is how I want it done. You read these instructions and this is what I want you to do. So I read the instructions and I did them as well as I could. Um, but I, I broke a rule that wasn't even listed. And that was, I closed the bedroom door. Now the baby and I were in one room and I always close the door because I don't want the baby waking up the parents. That's my job. My job is to make sure that the parents also get a good night's sleep. And so I closed the bedroom door. He came storming through that bedroom in the middle of the night, scared that living come jeebies out of me. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 nothing. Why? Why? And he says, you may never close a door in my house. And I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't on the rules. <laughs> anyway, I said, and then I said, you know, this is not going to work for me. And he said, well, it's not going to work for me either. And so I was only there a couple of nights and that was the end of that. That's the only time that, that when you follow instructions, I would give you a little bit of leeway if you called me and told me that's what happened with you. So, um, but be, be flexible in changing the way that you do things a little bit. If it does not harm the baby, it follows the AP uh, safe sleeping um, instructions or anything else that, that may be violated. As long as the baby is not endangered, if there's ever anything that endangers a baby, you have my blessing to not do it. Or if they insist on doing something like having the baby sleep on the baby's tummy, um, then I would get a, um, I lost the word. Um, a piece of paper that they sign <laughs> that, that says that, that they want you to do that and that the doctor approves and the doctor needs to sign it also. And in that case, and I've actually got those if you ever need one uh, and you're a student of mine, they're yours uh, at no charge. So um, please feel free to, um, and I'll think of that word halfway through this and I'll probably say it. So anyway. Uh, you have to also take, have the ability to take hold or take control of a situation. You're going to walk in a lot of these jobs. And like I just said on the last job, they had never even held a baby before. And they're walking in with this brand new baby. And um, most of my clients will say to me, uh, and because I asked them, do you want me to take control of what we're doing here? Or do you want to be the one? And sometimes it is, you do it. Sometimes it's, can we do it together? Absolutely. And sometimes it's, they want to do it. Well, when they want to do it, we have a little bit of an issue because I am there to teach them. I am there to help them. And if they don't know what they're doing as before, that causes a little bit of problem. But basically, most of my clients are always, you tell us what to do and we'll do it. And those clients are the ones that have the babies that are just these easy peasy little children and they just sleep well. They are happy. They are just little dolls. Um, so anyway, be able to take control of the situation. Uh, you have to be in good health. Oh my goodness, please, please. And I don't mean that you have to be in pristine health. I mean that you cannot have anything wrong with you that requires you to have a full night's sleep. You have to take your meds. One time, thank God, only one time in my career, I had an NCS 
Um, the clients knocked on the door in the morning because she wasn't up and she wasn't gone when they got up and knocked on her door and she didn't answer. So they went in and found her unconscious and she was not taking her meds and she has diabetes and um, she was in a diabetic coma. So be sure that you can take your meds, you follow directions and you know how to control your own health issues. Um, <clears throat> you have to have, no, no, let me back that up. You need to be at least 18. There are so many girls, 16, 17, 18, who want to get into this field, but not only are they too young, I want you to finish high school first. And um, it's not a requirement. You do not have to have a high school degree, but if you are a young person, I will not allow you to take the course until after you have finished high school. Um, you need to know answers to their questions. So you need to be well informed. You need to be willing to educate yourself, not only through a course, but also through anything that has anything to do with newborns. For instance, you might want to take... Um, continuing education courses on uh, birthing or massage or multiples or um, lactation, uh, anything that has to do with a newborn. I have a couple of people that I'm gonna recommend to you right now um, that do excellent, excellent work with continuing education. Kimberly Bepler is one of them. I believe she does multiples uh, doula classes, and um, there's one other she does. Let me see if I've got it on my list here. Oh, I don't have it right. Oh, yes, I do. Lactation, lactation. Um, and then uh, Christy Jo Hendricks does an amazing lactation course. And of course, Summer's Sleep Secrets. I highly recommend her. She is an out of the box teacher, but she does this amazing class. I took the class, loved it, would love to take it again. Um, so if you're into sleep training or want to learn more about it, I would definitely go to her. Now, she does more of the sleep training, not sleep conditioning. Uh, sleep conditioning, you couldn't get from the course. And most of the courses do teach it. And sleep training is usually after that three-month period. You have to have computer skills. Hey, ladies, if you're not in the 20, what is this, 21st, 22nd century, you need to get on board. You have to have computer skills. You have to know how to send emails. You have to know how to attach an attachment like your resume to an email. It's really nice to be able to take, take a folder and name it your business. Now I'm gonna tell you that mine's General Venture or mine's actually exclusively newborns, that's my personal business. So I would have a folder named exclusively newborns. Inside that folder, there's files. Each of those files is a client and the client's, uh, the contract, the um, log, baby's log, like things like the baby's birth date, any notes you have about the family, anything that you do with that family goes into that file. So that when you open a folder and look at the files, you can find your client and say, okay, I'm having trouble with the baby with, that I'm with now. And here is the log for the baby that we figured it all out with. And you can go through the log and see exactly what you did on the job that you had success with and use it on the baby that you're having problems with right now. So that's just, and the other thing is um, I have an Excel program that I use for my invoices. Now I know there's a lot of good invoice uh, apps and programs and things. So, um, but know how to use a computer, a, a notebook, something that you can communicate with people. You need to have a website. We're gonna do all this stuff when we go further into the ABCs of business, how to build a website, how to get all this, it's all included in that. 
Um, you have to have a phone. That's obvious. And I'm not even going to go into anything more than that. You have to have a phone. The most important thing that you need to have to do this job, to do it well, is integrity. Integrity is an integral part of who we are and what we do. It's the ability to be honest and truthful and accurate in your own actions. Integrity is, is something like um, standing behind your word. If you say something, you do it. That's integrity. It's, it, I have let go of friends who have no integrity. I just can't deal with it. I can't deal with people who say to me, I'm going to do this, and then they never do it. When you are on a job and you tell a client you're going to do something, you better do it. Integrity means not going away on a weekend, a long weekend with your boyfriend and telling your client you're sick and you can't come into work. That's a lack of integrity. The, uh, the NCSs have a code of ethics and we would suggest that you look through the code of ethics and be sure that you can follow that code before you decide to become an NCS. And the other thing that I wanna throw in here, and I think that's just about, um, just about the end, um, is that I want you to consider certification very, very highly. We want to band together this group of NCSs into a community that can grow and that will become reputable and acknowledged. And the only way we can do that is if we all get together and we certify. Um, I'm just looking at um, what's next. There's one other thing that you need to do. Well, those, those are the things that if you are these things, you can be a good NCS. The next time we're going to go into things like, what are the boundaries for your work? Uh, so, and who are your clientele going to be? We are going to um, have you look at your competitors. See what they're doing. See where they're falling short. What can you do to fill the void of what's going on? Um, how can you make a difference? And then we are going to, uh, let me see if there's something. We're going to talk about, i got my list here, but we're going to talk about next time. Um, choosing a name for your company. Oh, that's always fun. And then registering your company's name, trademarking your name getting a tax ID number, how to define your target market. That's a little bit more difficult than you might think it is. Um, how to come up with a financial model of what you want to do. Come up with a marketing plan. How to write an operating agreement. And figuring out when you're going to start your business and when you can quit your day job. And... Um, do you need to secure a loan to do some of this? Or is it all just jump in and go for it and do what you want to do? So that is a little bit uh, about what I feel that you need to accomplish or be in order to be a good NCS. I'm sure I've left a lot of things off. And you can comment uh, below if you would like to. Uh, about what you think makes a good NCS. And um, I appreciate your listening and I will see you next time. Thank you very, very much.